Carlos Sigma Delta, on the Society of Agricultural Technology, invited me to um, this, this paper and also to share thoughts. So, the scope of my paper is uh, this. Uh, I would like to first discuss the past 40 years of biotechnology in the Philippines in a nutshell. And then, what are the prospects for Philippine biotech in the new decade, 2011 to 2020, and the challenges? Take note that I'm now using the uh, uh, the short, uh, the acronym for Philippines, no? that's PHL or PH. But since I'm a biochemist, PH is a different meaning. So, so this is uh, uh, what we have been doing, you know, in the last four decades. Uh, especially here at UPLB. So, of course, fermentation, tissue culture in the 1960s, white fertilizers uh, started in the 1980s. Uh, with markers, we have been doing this in the 1990s. Uh, include, uh, that will include protein and DNA markers for disease diagnosis from parietal identification and diversity and mar marker system And uh, in the 2000, we started working on recombinant DNA technology, uh, gene discovery, gene engineering of crops for improved trees, and uh, protein engineering. In terms of academic programs, uh, the MVD programs of UP Diliman started in the late 1980s and for UPLB in the late 1990s. These are some homegrown biotech products and I'm very sure that you're familiar with these. The tissue culture technologies, uh, the embryo rescue of Makapuno, we know that Makapuno cannot grow from seed. So, Dr. Enrita de Guzman, uh, did research on rescuing the embryo and putting on uh, in vitro. And then, of course, micropropagation of orchids. So this is Dr. Helen Belmayor. And Dr. Ramon Barba pioneered the induction of mango flowering using potassium nitrate. And that triggered the, uh, uh, the advance of uh, the mango industry. And he also developed micro micropropagation techniques for banana and And um, these are the many things that we have been doing at UPLB. We are really very uh, uh, much uh, ahead in tissue culture. Uh, our experts have done somatic embryogenesis of mango and banana, cassava, uh, leaf propagation, garlic and shallot, indigenous orchids, uh, markers, hybrid tests of coconut hybrids, fingerprints of papaya and mango steam, genetic diversity analysis. QTL mapping, maize, tomato, mountain. We also have done uh, conducted research on disease diagnostic kits, and we, we are using this. Uh, and for gene discovery, the ACCC taste of papaya, mango, the resveratrol synthase and chitinase genes, the coconut genes involved in fatty acid metabolism, the storage proteins and genes of coconut. Going out of UPLB, this is probably one of the most uh, uh, important uh, products of coming out of field rice. The uh, development of bacterial rice resistant rice varieties using um, marker assisted selection. You know? So we have uh, the Tobigan 7, NSIC RC142, and Tobigan 11, NSIC RC154. So, uh, field rice has uh, the uh, expertise and the uh, uh, facilities to do marker assisted uh, selection as part of their breeding program. For animal biotechnology, of course we are familiar with artificial insemination and vaccines, sex reversal technology, in vitro fertilization, and their transfer, and then uh, in the 1990s, use of uh, biotechnology in nutrition, diagnostics, and marker technologies. I will show some, some of the results, no? some of the outputs. 
for uh, reproductive biotechnology. These uh, are twin cubs, and uh, this is a, pro a work, the work of uh, the DA Philippine Carbon Center in Nueva Ecija. They did multiple ovulation uh, embryo transfer, and uh, what they did was to conduct the in vitro fertilization in India. Then they froze the embryos, and the frozen embryos were transported to the Philippines. They were transferred to surrogate cargo mothers. And so now we have purebred uh, Mura, uh, Mura buffaloes no? from uh, India, which have better milk uh, uh, production and meat. And then the sex reversal of tilapia was initially done by Dr. Guerrero in Auburn for his PhD, and he continued work as LSU. And uh, what he did that was really uh, uh, has uh, impacted the uh, fish, the, the industry is trying this on commercial scale in the early 1980s. And so now we know that the tilapia industry we know is uh, uh, in, in great uh, part due to this work on the reverse sex reversal. Because if uh, you have uh, a pond of uh, a mix of male and female, you'll find out that you will only have very small uh, fish because they will be mating and uh, there will be no time for really growing. They're just reproducing. And for the health, uh, I, I uh, provide you with this uh, information from the St. Paul's <coughs> Medical Center. Because they're really ahead. The Research Biotechnology Division started in 1995. And they're capable of doing all of this. Huh? So DNA-based tests, monitoring disease gene markers, detect infectious diseases. They have uh, the serum bank, uh, dengue serological detection kit, etc. Molecular diagnosis, chromosomal analysis for virus diseases, cancer disorders. They have a very strong uh, biotech group headed by Dr. Pilipinas uh, <coughs> And then foreign products of biotech have been tested and adopted in the Philippines. So uh, I have included this because it's, it's a very important part of uh, the biotechnology development in our country. So, so in uh, 2000, the field testing of, uh, of the 1810 started. And, uh, by 2000, uh, after two years or so, we started commercialization of uh, GM crops in the Philippines. So for propagation, we have uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five single transformation events. For stock trades, we have two. So this is the, the BT core with the Roundup Trade trade, herbicide tolerant uh, trade, and then also this one BT11 by G8. This data is not complete. I couldn't open the website of the DA. And uh, so for processing, uh, the DA has approved many uh, transformation events. So these are the, the products that can be commercially grown in the Philippines, propagated. This one, this for processing, this can be imported by uh, companies but they cannot be grown, no? they cannot be planted. They are only for processing. And right now, there are more than 400,000 hectares of GM corn, uh, hectares of GM corn planted in the Philippines. So we are one of the mega countries uh, um, land that have planted uh, GM crops. So these are the way for generations of biotechnology processes we have first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave. Most of the current commercial products belong to the first wave. So agronomic traits like uh, the insect protected corn, that's BT corn, the herbicide tolerant corn, uh, for agronomic, uh, which will have these uh, uh, outstanding agronomic traits. And of course, the recombinant health products produced by microorganisms. Uh, so, of course, the, uh, the first example that we have would be the insulin, uh, which is uh, 
produce in microorganisms. So, the second way will be the quality traits for improved nutrition and nutritional proper, functional properties. A good example is the golden rice, which has um, more of the, uh, the beta carotene. And, and then the third way will be using plants and animals as factories for pharmaceuticals as well as industrials. And the fourth way is the, for the biofuels for or renewable resources. And probably this will be the most difficult because here um, complex pathways are actually introduced, not just one gene or two genes, but several genes. So what's in store for this new decade? What are the prospects for the country? What are our research programs? So what I've done here is actually write to um, institutions that have biotech programs. And I also uh, uh, did a lot of studying uh, on the website. So now it's very important to have a very good website where you, you can uh, show what you're doing and this is what many companies are doing and uh, and uh, you can download many old, many articles also on the different uh, 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 products or programs but we'll start with what we have at TPL. so what's in store no we have been these are uh, this for example the animal biotechnology program at UPLD I did I did not have much uh, in the earlier slides uh, only artificial insemination and uh, what else? Of course, the sex reversal and the uh, embryo transfer. But now we have uh, these two projects in the animal and dairy sciences cluster of the College of Agriculture Applied Animal Biotech for the Improvement of Philippine Mother Ducks, uh, led by Dr. Lambio, Dr. Vega, Dr. Capitan, and uh, Mr. Jed Lebron. So these are the uh, objectives. Analyzing genetic diversity and assessing the heterogeneity levels in garden liver. And Dr. Sevilla is heading this very important uh, project on optimizing the ecology of indigenous ruminants for efficient production. Identifying dominant ruminant bacteria and so on. So you can see now that the uh, 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 that the, that the strategy has really uh, changed. No? Uh, these projects now are using the more uh, advanced uh, technologies that biotechnology can offer. How about crop biotechnology? So these are actually, we started this 10 years ago. So this, uh, uh, for example, this first project, uh, we started in 2007. So it's actually in second decade. No? Uh, the transgenic papaya with the late dry trait and PRS resistance is a way to be tried up. And the fruit and shoot water resistant with the eggplants being field tested. The sweet potato with resistance to sweet potato, feathery bottle virus is also in contain, is in contain facility testing. So these are the, uh, the GM products that are uh, currently in the pipeline. And of course, you know uh, the incident. Uh, regarding the BT eggplant that just occurred last week and it's in the news uh, the plants being uprooted the plants were uprooted by a group of uh, uh, activists and uh, the sad thing is that they're, we're just, you know, the scientists are just doing their job complying with by safety regulations and yet their, their work is being hampered by uh, these, these people. No? So, okay, so I'm introducing to most of to you the Philippine Genome Program. This is actually a UP system wide program involving the UP demand. It's NINDB, no? so this is the National Institute for Molecular Biology and Biotechnology. UP Manila, their INDB, this is, so this is their biotech the NIH of UP Manila, and then of course UP Los Banos, involving I IBS, Institute of Biological Sciences, and IPB, Crop Science Cluster. So what are we going to do? For 
UPLB, this is building on the previous decades outputs. We have started doing this, you know, in uh, small projects. So now we would like to do more and involve more people. And the uh, overall thing is enhancing agricultural productivity through genomics. So right now we have two projects, big projects, uh, Abaca and Saba. Abaca being endemic to the Philippines. Bananas, the Saba especially, is also endemic to the Philippines. So these are the two important reasons. And of course, they are very important agricultural uh, commodity products. No? So this includes marker-assisted breeding of abaca for the development of high fiber quality and virus resistant cultivars, and construction and analysis of abaca expressing well stacks, library and functional analysis of selected traits. So this we have been uh, we, have, we started doing this. Uh, Dr. Lucy is the project leader, so he started uh, five four years ago. And but this one, this will be the, our first uh, venture into this uh, kind of study, you know. But probably some of you may ask, uh, how come we are going to, to do the genome sequence? You know, you have sequ people have sequenced the human genome, the rice genome, the core genome. Why, why, why don't we um, um, sequence the Apaka genome? It's ours. The thing is that there is no other work. There are no other works in Abaca that we can use as reference. We have to start at the start, at the beginning, and that is by uh, getting this, studying the express sequence studies. No? So we're doing that again. Also for Saba, ESTs, DNA markers for uh, identification, for diversity analysis and the mass box genes which are involved in ripening. So this is, an, these are, and this is an important family of genes for ripening. These are the different, uh, the, these are the people involved, and uh, Dr. Laude is the overall program coordinator. And we need, definitely we need more people uh, in this program. Of course, the third project is, is coconut. So once we get started here, the coconut will be the third one. Of course, the, the uh, more exciting term is biosurveillance. 
biobanking program of microbial tissue cellular assembly and genetic resources. Yeah. UP Mindanao, Dr. Dulce Flores, project leader. She used to be with Biotech. Uh, uh, yeah, Biotech, no? But she transferred to UP Mindanao, and uh, it's, she is uh, UP Mindanao's main and our loss. So the UP Mindanao Biotech focuses on conservation and utilization of the Sago Pump. So they, they're doing micropropagation, molecular characterization, extraction, functional characterization, and food applications of Sago Starts, the biodegradable plastics from Sago Starts, direct lactic acid fermentation using aminolytic uh, lactic acid bacteria. And she obtained 18 million rights of grant from the UP system to build her laboratory, beautiful facilities. Biotech at UP Diliman. So this is from Dr. Cynthia Greda. Their vision, genome-based research in different aspects of molecular biology and biotechnology. So just to give you an, uh, the, an idea of uh, what they're doing. Antibody and molecular oncology, fluorescent proteins for marine invertebrates, microbial enzymes for industrial use in bioremediation, molecular studies on BPO Harvey and BPO on Berry and fatty acid synthesis and express genes in algae. So this is for the production of uh, oil in algae for biofuel. This is uh, the uh, pathogens in shrimp. Uh, this is the work of Dr. Nebrinda. This is the work of uh, Dr. Santos in collaboration with Dr. Edward Lan. Biotech at Diliman, NSRI, no? National Natural Science Research Institute, DNA Analysis Lab for service. So if you have some problems in uh, identification of your a parent, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, then they do service. It's 45,000 pesos for a package analysis. Mitochondrial DNA heteroplasmy in a Philippine, in Filipino population, etc. So, Dr. Maria Corazon is the head. They're doing a very good job. It's because of this group that uh, uh, DNA forensic using DNA is now accepted in our court. And we have to credit Dr. Obia and her group. Yeah. Biotech at Field Rice. I think uh, the most notable will be their work on the golden rice. So they are. They have already introgressed, no? they have already crossed the golden rice coming from uh, the, do the donors from Sitsingenta uh, uh, and have crossed this with, uh, uh, with elite lines no? from the Philippines and they are now going into field testing with the International Rice Research Institute. Okay, so that's what we are, we, what we have, uh, what we will have in the Philippines. But how about the products that are coming from outside? For better pest resistance and with control, water use efficiency, nitrogen use efficiency, intrinsic yield, and quality traits. Let's see what they have. For better pest resistance and herbicide tolerance, they have now root war resistance, a third generation or water uh, uh, resistant uh, corn. They have multi stock traits such as this product, Agrisure Big Therapse in Genta, which controls as many as 12 above and below ground insect pests, including corn water, rootworm, multi pest complex, plus herbicide tolerance, flexibility using either glyphosate or glyphosate applications. So, well, before one only. Then they added the herbicide tolerance. Now they have uh, a product that is good, that can control as many as 12 pests. This is very important to take note of because we grow a lot of sugar cane. Uh, this is sugar cane with insect resistance and herbicide tolerance. This is still in the early stage. But herbicide tolerance is you know, sugar cane, they have had this since 1997 when I visited Texas a and they, were, they already had this in field testing. But now this is, uh, uh, now with the multinational, no? I think this is 
Monsanto now, and they have incorporated uh, insect resistance. For drought tolerance, so water stress exposure with the gene, without the gene. So take note of the of the uh, core ears. Here very nice and large, no? Here very stunted. So I think the control could not could not stand uh, drought. This can still grow well even with less water. Um, here, the experiment says do not water. Instead of watering it, you know, it says do not water. And the Monsanto and the ASF are doing this collaboratively. And they use a gene from Bacillus salis called CSP beta, which helps the bacteria cope with cold temperature. So in the bacteria, it helps the bacteria cope with cold temperature. But in, when it was transferred to the plant, it will now now it's giving it a different uh, trait, no? uh, tolerance to drought. This uh, is now in uh, advanced stages. Actually, it, it, uh, it's expected to be launched this year, 2011. And uh, it gives a 7 to 16% yield advantage. So perhaps after BT corn and BT herbicide tolerant corn, this is the next product that we can, that the Philippines can probably try to adapt, no? So the other companies are um, also testing uh, or developing technologies, the water efficiency technology, no? uh, just like the drought tolerance. So this is Performance Plants Incorporated of Canada, it's a wet technology, allows plants to grow normally and produce excellent seed yields with significantly less water. So the experiments show that the wet plants produce 22% 20, more growth in limited water. And now they are demonstrating it, no? putting the gene into other crops. So can we... The video will just show you, it will show you uh, the technology. Okay, look at the plant. Okay, so they're growing control and with the gene. Then the water uh, becomes limiting. This wheels, this starts to wheel. Water is added. So 
tested by Monsanto, it gives uh, all this uh, youth advantage over control. All that are proof of concept stage, the main targets are of course corn, and then grapeseed, wheat, and rice. How about increasing biomass? Suited for large biomass applications, no, like a feedstock for cellulosic ethanol, for fiber, and for forage. So this technology by uh, uh, Plant Performance Incorporated provides or gives two times more biomass by enhancing vegetative plant growth. And it's now being introduced to crops. So can, can you see the short video? markers. 
Now, this is a study done by Edgar Tone, and this study shows that from 2005 to uh, 2013, you know, they see that the ag agronomy will only give so much with agronomy. Uh, conventional breeding can also increase con con corn yield, but only so much. But uh, there will be uh, significant yield increase using marker assisted breeding as well as introducing biotech traits. So, what are our strengths? So, earlier I showed you the different programs that we have for the, this decade. How uh, can, can we really uh, undertake all these programs? Our strengths, our academic programs, we have these programs, BSMDB, BS Agribiotech, BS Bioengineering in Mapua, MSPHC programs in MDB, and allied programs. We have a small number, but tenacious researchers. Our basic facilities, we, we do have good basic facilities. Of course, we can always say they're lucky, but uh, I remember uh, National Scientist Helia Mastillo always telling us, you have to look at things, you know, from a better, from the good perspective, better perspective. Look at it as a half filled rather than a half empty glass. So our basic facilities are good and our rich genetic resources. What are the, what are the challenges? So, uh, DOSC Secretary Mario Montejo has expressed support to biotech. Biotech continues as one of DOSC's key programs. And Secretary Montejo has actually challenged us. Where will the Philippine, where will Philippine biotechnology be in five years, in ten years? We want, he wants us to benchmark. Will we be like Singapore in, uh, let's, let's say, five years ago or ten years ago? But we have to have a goal. Whether it's ten years ago in Singapore, but we have to have a goal. The challenges, the regulation of GM, uh, R&D and products. But the biosafety regulatory system of the Philippines is operational. It is strict, but it works. And it's actually a model for many countries. Another challenge, agricultural biotechnology is a scale of great achievement and, however, of constant controversy by Christopher Lieber, a medical professor of Oxford University. Our biotech has given activism big success stories. And activism is actually frozen policy and regulatory attitudes. So we do need more responsible activism. Challenges? Research budget. Do we have enough? The DOSCGA budget for R&D in 2010 was 20 pH, the, uh, peso 638 million. Looks good. Big, large. Actually, uh, UPLP is a big chunk, you know, 230 million dollar pesos. However, look at this, at this number. Malaysia provides each of its four research universities 50 million dollars per year. 50 million dollars per university. This is 638 million for all research institutes, etc. universities. And I'd like to give examples like Kyoto University is $236 million for its research. Uh, Korean Advanced State, uh, Advanced Institute of Science and Technology is about $350 million. Then you go to Stanford University, it's $1.2 billion just for Stanford. And if you go to Monsanto, an example of a multinational, it has thousands of research scientists just in the U.S. alone, it will have thousands, or 400, thousand scientists. And in India, it already has, uh, China, it has uh, uh, established a research uh, unit in India. Researchers, do we have enough? We really don't have enough researchers. We don't have enough people to do all the research. So even if you give us 100 billion pesos budget, we don't have enough people to do it. So we do have academic programs. We are, we are producing graduates. So we would like the graduates now to be able to be absorbed 
by our universities and our industry and other research institutes. So targets to increase the research budget, the number of high caliber scientists, the number of commercializable biotech products. So in this presentation, I did not really dwell so much on the commercialization, but that is really a must, no? Um, a lot of money also generated by biotech products. We have to increase the number of biotech companies in the Philippines so that there will be a greater number of people who will be employed directly by the biotech industries. Because you know we have right now we have 80 more than 80 BSF biotech students. Uh, we have uh, um, we have probably 30 students in our MS and PhD and MD program. So we should have uh, the research institutes and the biotech companies to absorb them. Otherwise, they go to greener pasture. So with that, uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Mendoza. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mendoza. If you uh, want to take a closer look at Dr. Mendoza's PowerPoint, you will be providing a PDF copy of it later this week to be uploaded in the CIRCO website. So now it's time for your questions or comments. Do you have any questions or comments for Dr. Mendoza? Please use the microphones around the room. Introduce yourself as well as your organization. Any questions from our audience? Questions or comments. Uh, by the way, we apologize for the the smell. I think there is uh, something wrong with the air conditioning. That's why we opened the doors. Open. So, any questions or comments from our audience? Yes, Doctor Necesito. Yeah, actually I have some observation. You know, sometimes in 2005, the Phil Rice and the International Rice Research Institute had a joint claim of agreement to implement the USDA uh, funded program. And this is on the acceptability of biotech rice my farmers and consumers. Now, the Philippines was the only country that did that kind of work among all the rice grower, growing countries in Southeast Asia. And I also know that at that point in time, Japan, in fact, banned any kind of GMO rice entry into Japan. So, I was kind of wondering what is the reason why the Philippines was chosen as a country for testing biotech rights that others have tried to avoid? Well, maybe because of its high birth rate I mean, population increase. But more than this, I just read the other day, or yesterday in the newspaper, there are, there are some groups that are kind of worried about, you know, GMOs. And that uh, the campus of the university, its reaction was that we should be allowed because this is, you know, as a university we should be free in our thoughts. Of course, we have expressed that kind of, uh, in the past, we have declared the campus and the university have declared as in a nuclear uh, institution. So, I kind of, uh, you know, project this kind of thought that here we are. Japan, for all its fear of biotechnology, does not fear nuclear energy. There are so many nuclear energy in the country of Japan. But the Philippines, we fear nuclear, but does not fear biotechnology. So why this difference? Is it a level of uh, knowledge? This fear? Uh, I don't know. So that's why I, I kind of uh, asked this question. Uh, I was a little worried about the Philippines being used as a rabbit for testing biotechnology. Uh, 
Hey, hey, Kyle. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, um, that's a very good question. The acceptability of uh, uh, biotech products, especially the uh, the food, is uh, has been a, a problem. Uh, can, the countries like uh, Japan, Korea, and of course we know the European Union uh, really have uh, 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 do not like no, uh, or do not accept GM products. In the Philippines, in, uh, in the U.S., in Canada, where they have done a lot of work, they have done all the research, etc., there is uh, great acceptability or, uh, of uh, GM products, uh, food products. In the Philippines, as you mentioned, um, is the, here we are testing the biotech uh, rice, not the wild. Uh, uh, well, what I can say is that one, um, we have a very good regulatory system. I think that, that was one of the uh, uh, considerations uh, of uh, of technology developers when they go into a country where they would like to test the product is the presence of a good regulatory system. Secondly, um, acceptability. Even um, many years back, uh, of, well, many years back, actually, um, the acceptability of, of GM products in the Philippines was also low. But probably unlike uh, other countries, here in the Philippines, we have had an active science community that has uh, tried uh, to, to explain and to discuss what biotechnology is, what are the issues and concerns with the public, the general public, the media. So we, I, I have been involved, uh, sir, since 1992, 1993. And uh, acceptability has increased since that time. So now, how about in Japan? How about in other countries? The scientists are not really that involved in the uh, explaining um, what is biotech in the general public. I have had the opportunity to uh, to be in Japan uh, for length, you know, for for some of three months or so, and um, they do a lot of uh, genetic engineering work, molecular biology work in the in the different universities. If you go to the website of their biosafety regulatory uh, network, uh, there is the listing of all the work that they're doing. They're even doing rice that uh, uh, will lessen the allergenicity uh, of people to rice. Because some, there are some Japanese who are allergic to, are allergic to rice. There's a lot of work going on, but outside, the general public has low acceptability. It's a um, the discussion is getting. But uh, in one of the studies done, uh, survey studies done in many countries that will include that include Korea, Japan, and the Philippines, when the, the question on acceptability was um, what do you call this was rewarded, no? So the, the wording was changed into, will you accept a GM crop uh, or GM food if it contributes to sustainable agriculture or to uh, uh, sustain environment, good environment, then the, the Japanese and the Koreans, they the score for the Japanese and the Koreans when up, no? Higher siya. Pero if the wording is only are you going to eat GM food or not, then it's course slow. But if you put it in another way, that using this um, uh, product will improve or will uh, contribute to a more sustainable environment, then they will accept. No? So I don't know, I don't think I will be able to answer your question uh, uh, sufficiently. But uh, those are my observations and uh, what I have uh, um, also, uh, what do you call this, uh, came from my readings. And it's, it's also really, 
up for four technologies, no? GM. If it's food, there is a, a greater, let's say, okay, you have the food here, I, I will buy it or I will not buy it. But if it's a product, health product, like insuring which you inject, no question. It's a matter of life and death, but it's food. Food is culture. So there are many, many cultural differences between and among uh, nationalities and uh, so So. Okay. Uh, Can I just have this one comment about the regulatory biosafety, uh, regulatory system in the Philippines is very efficient. I would like to disagree with that. Because in fact, uh, it looks so in paper we follow if we go WHO, but never is able, you know, it's even as you have mentioned that we don't really have enough people, even the facilities that we have. In fact, this is one of the laughable things that uh, many foreign companies that would register products here, that they would say, you know, you guys, you require so much, and if you don't have the capability to even, you know, assess the quality of a particular product. So, I don't know where it came from, but it, it does say so in paper, really, but because we follow the WHO, anything, the Philippines is a very good signatory of many things, even in the draft form, we will, you know, sign. Yeah, so, okay, but I also disagree with you on that point. I have been involved with our regulatory system as a technology developer. We work with them constantly. Uh, there are always... Uh, uh, reading their uh, uh, their knowledge, uh, they're always the, the the facilities may not be you know just like in Singapore or Japan, but uh, we have they have uh, the knowledge, they have the training, so they do their work, sir. So I beg to disagree with that. So I guess maybe we can uh, schedule another ABS is on uh, regulatory uh, things, so we can uh, at this point we can agree to disagree for that. Any more questions or comments from our audience? Yes, sir, from the back. Uh, I'm Lorena from IPB. So probably one why uh, the Philippines was the only signatory. Because uh, before even 2005, the requirement of Syngenta, the one who holds the golden rice technology, they want to make sure that if a country is going to accept golden rice, that country must have a regulatory agency. And at that time, only the Philippines has a suitable regulatory agency. And I'm one of those persons who were tapped by Bangladesh to go there for a week to help them uh, set up a regulatory agency. So right now, Bangladesh is involved in the golden rice because now they have a regulatory agency. And they look at the Philippine regulatory agency as a model in Southeast Asia. Thank you very much. Actually, yeah, I uh, don't know if I was it not. Uh, our regulatory system, a uh, biotech regulatory, regulatory system, is a model not only in Southeast Asia, but uh, in many, many parts of the world. We have had uh, visitors as far as uh, from Africa to, uh, to learn from our regulators. Thank you for that input, sir. Any more inputs or comments, questions from our audience? Now I have a question. Um, you compared uh, earlier on the difference uh, in communicating the Japanese and the Philippines. Would you say that we are more uh, stronger basically in social marketing than I am uh, biotech products here? Uh, it's not. Well, Who said this? The former president of Crop Life uh, Asia said one time when we met, you know, we are very, I uh, congratulate you in the Philippines because it's only in the Philippines where the scientific community has really gone out of, of uh, their way to communicate uh, what biotechnology is. Whether it's not, should not be pro, it should be, it should be neutral. Explaining what biotech is, uh, to the general public, to the media. So um, they did not do that in Thailand. Uh, 
when I again in Japan, uh, they, they, even their high school uh, teachers uh, have not had, of course, the training. So now they they have to have training in biotechnology, no? So, well, well, I'm not sure how many of them are going to have a political discussion from the scientific community. That's what, what we're encouraging our scientists to come out, not only for about biotechnology, for other technologies like the nuclear power plant. How come uh, Japan is also in the earthquake uh, falls and yet it has how many, sir? About 10 um, nuclear power plants. Korea is building uh, more power plants. And the one, the first uh, power, nuclear power plant of Korea was exactly the same model as the one that we mothballed in Bataan, exactly the same. Okay, we have time for one more question or comment from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Miriam Tenya from CA. Madam, Madam, about labeling of chair products. I, sorry, I was late because we had the CA Expo meeting. Uh, isn't it that we have already products in the market? That could be uh, from GM products, process products. So, uh, do we have labeling? I know, it, kasama ba yun sa, sa agenda natin, research agenda? We have products, labeling of products. Um, presently, we, uh, the, the Philippines follows the, the uh, labeling regulations. Na, if there are any toxic uh, components or uh, allergenic components in the food or the food product, then the manufacturer has to declare. So that's the only. Uh, it, it's um, it's like warning. You know? Like if you have noticed, uh, products like uh, crackers, etc., would say this may have some peanut. Because there are many people who are allergic to peanuts, so but but uh, there is no labeling law on uh, labeling if uh, it has GM or not. Uh, and uh, I I don't know if uh, there could be any, but right now it's uh, like that. If there is only a health concern, of course if there are toxins, probably they will not even be uh, commercialized. The product is toxic. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Dr. Mendoza. Let's give Dr. Mendoza another round of applause.